Tori so recorded off either my nephew or my son, who both live at home with me. Um, my nephew was sitting next to a girl in class that had whooping cough, and we were told that he got it, although he was immunised, because his immunisation had worn off. The noise she made gives you like the worst sound, just trying to get breath. And Di said that's it. And I think driving to the hospital was the longest drive, even though it's about 20 minutes away. She was put on CPAP, which is a breathing machine to make her breathe. Eventually they told us they had to get the drip in because the IVM because they may have to put her on life support. She's, what? She's going on life support, but support for what? We, we didn't understand this. And I think that's, that's the worst and being sent away, knowing that I'd taken her to the doctors, I'd taken her to the hospital, and now I took her to the hospital and I was gonna to refuse to, to leave. And all of a sudden she's on CPAP with a machine pushed up her nose to make her to breathe. and. And then the next step is life support, and what can we do? Nothing. When they told, told us that they may have to put her on life support, we took her for a cough, Jay. Mm, I know. We had no idea it would get to that extent. I said to Di, you know, I really don't want to leave until she stops going blue. Because at least mm. she turns blue at the hospital, they got the care, they got the machines and all that to help her. Here, you know, like we're 20 minutes from a hospital. 20 minutes can be in between life and death. You as a parent want to protect your child and you couldn't. You had to leave it in the faith of the doctors and that. And when more and more and more doctors came into it, it really, it was at the stage where we really didn't know whether she'd survive or not. You take it for granted, a child's born, and then, you know, she'll be fine. But as quick as they can come, they can be taken away. Bringing her home that day, um, you know, bringing her home finally after, you know, the traumatic period, that was probably the best moment of my life. I think when she smiled, because when she was in the hospital, it wasn't far away from coming home. That was her first smile of her life. And to me, there was some hope there with that smile. I've now found an awareness of whooping cough, which I didn't realise before how serious it is. And Di starting this group and her push to make more people aware of it um, has really been good. I can talk about it as much as I can, as, mu as much as anybody will listen. And maybe, just maybe, there'll be one mum that hears the Tory story, and it's a plus, that's a gain. And if one mum gets her child vaccinated from this, and her child, she, she doesn't have to sit in a hospital helpless watching her child die, that's a gain. Okay, and that's what I've gained from it, is that, you know, I now know why we get our children vaccinated, and now I can spread the word to make other mums know why as well, not just me. It doesn't matter whether you're a parent or not. You can catch it, you can pass it on to your neighbour, somebody at school, where you work, they could have a baby at home. And if they have a baby who is unimmunised and too young to be immunised, they will be fighting for their life. Most of these babies that are getting it are too young to be immunised and it's people that aren't immunised that are giving these unimmunised babies these preventable diseases, pretty much. We were lucky. Other parents weren't. Yeah. Mm -hmm.